For this video, we're going to be talking about some recent decisions that we made for the bus, and especially as they relate to gear. Uh, one of the main decisions that we made that helped us move forward was the solar system. And the solar system has informed a lot of other decisions we've made for appliances for the bus. We're going to dive into those too. Yeah, exactly. We've made a lot of choices regarding coffee makers, stove tops, refrigerators. So get your gear fixed in this video. Uh, as always, we really appreciate you guys watching. We hope you enjoy it. Bye. So we're having to make a lot of changes when it comes to making coffee to save energy. Uh, we decided to get this manual coffee grinder by Mueller. Um, as with most things, we picked it because it was well reviewed, but also because it's very compact. This guy comes off and that's going to take up no space. Um, you can also grind coarse ground, which is perfect for our French press. Speaking of the French press, we decided to go with this guy. It's by Stanley. It's just like a classic little camping French press. It's double walled. Even in the lid, it's double walled. And you can see there's a notch there so you can actually seal off the spout and keep it hot even longer. We've been playing with this thing for a few days and it's keeping our coffee hot for three or four hours, no problem. And finally, we decided to get these Yeti coffee mugs. Honestly, I've already always kind of wanted one but didn't have a good reason to have them. They're vacuum sealed, they've got good uh, seal lids on them. They're going to be great for keeping our coffee hot and also for having some soup. As far as cooking is concerned, this is our solution. This is an Origo two burner alcohol stove. Runs off of denatured alcohol and is really easy. It's self-contained, completely manual, requires no electricity, very easy to maintain. What I love about this stove are its simple mechanisms. Controlling the heat is as simple as obviously controlling the intensity dials, but those intensity dials will actually correspond directly to a physical leaflet that will move over and off of uh, the alcohol container inside. What's happening is as you put in the denatured alcohol into these containers, they fill up with alcohol, but they're spill proof. So there's no liquid going anywhere. And as you light it, what's combusting is actually the fumes coming off of the alcohol itself, which makes it really safe because it's not pressurized compared with propane or another fuel source like that that are pressurized. It can really be explosive. This is not on the other hand. Denatured alcohol is kind of interesting by itself. This is what it looks like, so it's, it's kind of disconcerting. It says clean glass on the front. Uh, the reason for that is that, yeah, I mean, it has a lot of uses, not just for fuel. The fact that it's denatured, denatured essentially means that uh, the manufacturers have added a poison to it to make it taste bitter. And like I said, it's actually poison. So they were trying to deter people from recreationally drinking it. Uh, so if you're using denatured alcohol, don't get any ideas bad idea to, to consume that, really just use as a fuel, at least on our side. In our testing already, it's performed very well. So we're, we're really excited about it and we think it's going to do great. Okay, so this is our Dometic 50 quart fridge. We traded in the old one, as we mentioned before, uh, for this guy because we think it's going to be a lot more energy efficient. So I'm going to take the temperature down. And you'll see in a second, this light will turn on, letting us know that the compressor is on. There it is. And it's pretty quiet. I don't even know if you can hear that. But it doesn't pull much power at all. And if we want to, in a bind, we can even charge a phone in the USB port down here. So this is our current home refrigerator, which we never fill all the way up. Everything we had in here is now in the Dometic and fits fine. But it's still going to be a little bit of a challenge, I think. And if you're wondering how much this guy can hold, this is our groceries for probably three or four days. We've got to do some work. We have more condiments than we need in there and everything. Um, we don't need this giant thing of almond milk. But I think it's going to work for our needs. And I'm excited about this light that comes on when you open it, too. So our solution for our electrical system is the Goal Zero Yeti 1400. So this is basically almost all of our electrical system. We have two sets of solar panels outside, uh, 200 watts going directly into uh, the 1400. What's great about these is that it gives you a lot of information on this digital readout. So it's telling me that I've got 143 watts of solar coming in. 
and then I'm only using 20 watts right now because I've got our Dometic fridge hooked into the 12 volt DC right here. And then we have my MacBook Pro that's fully charged at the moment, but still running off of this. Uh, it's only pulling about 30 watts. Uh, once this compressor kicks on for the Dometic, then it'll jump up to like 60. Uh, but once that, it only lasts a few seconds, then it comes back down and then we're only pulling 30 again. So we're making a lot more electricity uh, via solar than we're using, which is fantastic. Uh, what's great about that too is that these systems, once they're fully charged, they can do pass through. So whatever electricity that we're making out of that solar system uh, is going basically bypassing the battery because it's full and going directly to our devices. So that's really handy. We love this system because it's all completely enclosed into one package. We have a charge controller built in, a solar charge controller. Uh, we have an inverter built in right here for the 120 volt AC. Uh, we have a lot of safety features built into these, so if we're uh, pulling too much voltage or if we've got too much coming in, uh, it'll let us know about it. Uh, and we preferred that over a system that we would have someone else put in for us, simply because we want to be able to understand the system. We don't have a whole lot of knowledge when it comes to elect electrical systems, uh, or especially solar, just never dealt with it before. And we like the idea of being able to wrap our minds around it instead of looking at it and just being really confused. And if somebody else were to put it in, we would have no idea about how it works and if something's wrong, where we could go to fix it. Obviously we can learn and we've learned a lot just by researching electrical stuff and by researching the goal zero itself. Uh, but still at the same time, we don't want our first system or our first attempt at a system to be our house. Uh, it tends to be a safety issue. This is way, way simpler. And from our initial testing, looks like it's going to be way, it's going to be perfect for our needs. Um, we also have a Yeti 400. Basically, this, it's the same thing as this, just slower. Instead of 1400 watt hours, it's 400 watt hours. Uh, it's the lead acid version. This is a lithium version. Uh, we really got that other one just as a backup and it's a little bit more portable since it's smaller we can take it outside uh, have it next to our campsite or have it next to a fire not too close to a fire um, but we have that as well but really we're we're really excited about their performance so far goal zero is a really nice company i saw them two years ago at photokina started doing some research uh, recently because we started to get frustrated we got frustrated with not knowing how to move forward for our electrical started looking at alternatives and found goal zero. They have a lot of van life people using these uh, kinds of systems, if not this system exactly. People take them up to Everest and charge them off of solar and where, so they can still have communications and power and, and can talk to the outside world and figure if it's good enough for them, it's gotta be good enough for us. We kind of took stock of all of our electrical needs and we really don't use that much. We charge devices. We uh, work off of laptops, but we really don't use a lot of other electrical appliances in particular like kitchen appliances. We just don't use them. And so we started thinking about how much we really needed and it wasn't that much. And so we figured that 1400 watt hours would satisfy us a lot on their website. They say that this can charge a laptop around, uh, I just blanked. It's like 48 or 28 times, whatever it is, it's a lot. So that's fairly significant, but, but really, especially this readout. Uh, is, is one reason why we wanted to go with these because again, it's all enclosed and it gives you a ton of information. It knows what it's doing at all times, essentially. We have 148 watts coming in. We've got 25 watts going out. Pretty easy stuff. So we're, we're really pleased with it so far and uh, we can't wait to start really, really testing it. So now that you've seen all the gear that we've decided to get, now it's time to put it to the test. This week, from Monday to Friday, we're going to be working and living essentially entirely, almost entirely, off of our solar system. So we're, as well as all of the other uh, gadgets that we have to basically be off grid. We're going to see how how well it works or how poorly it works. We're going to see how much power we're really using on a day to day basis. Just not only just in our leisure time, but also to get work done, which is of course extremely important. We have to make money on the road and. We have to have our computers in order to do it, as well as our uh, internet system. So uh, that's going to be happening for five days. 
uh, a few parameters. Uh, we're not completely off grid essentially during this test. We're still living in the house and we're still uh, using the heating system in the house as well as a few other things, but we're not using any AC outlets except for those that are on the Yeti solar systems. We're generating all of our electricity that we're using for uh, our typical devices from solar. And we're going to live and die by that. And so we're going to track all of the mistakes we make, track all of the times, oh, yeah, I went into the, uh, I, I, I plugged into the outlet when I wasn't supposed to. Or if we're finding that we're using way too much power, we'll document that. We're going to see how the solar system behaves on days where it's really sunny like today and really cloudy like it was yesterday. So really good test. We have the luxury of time, so we might as well put it together. So thanks for watching this video, guys. We really appreciate it. Just as a little caveat, we're not sponsored by any of the brands that uh, we talked about today. We bought them because we think that they're the best solution, not necessarily overall, but for us. So bear that in mind. We're not really partial to any of them more so than another, especially not in terms of uh, sponsorship. So. Now that that's taken care of, we really appreciate you guys watching the video. Stay tuned for uh, the results of the test. We'll see how easy or difficult it was. And so I think it could be really interesting for us and maybe for you guys that are maybe considering some similar systems. How is it working for us? And it may be the same for you. So thanks for watching very much. We really appreciate it. And as always, we'll see you next time.